I'm going to let the, the current just push us around for a little bit while we go over this so that we're kind of just floating around in some still water here. But the first thing that you're ever going to do with streamer fishing, I don't care if you're fly, dry fly fishing, I don't care what you're doing, but when you cast this fly out, first things first, boom, that line goes under these two fingers. And I'll show you guys that again, but check this out. And I'll switch between uh, the main camera and the GoPro frequently, but check this out. The moment this fly hits the water, boom, there. That way if I get it and eat, boom, I can strip and strip again. The thing that a lot of people do um, when they're first starting out is they'll make this cast and they'll keep the line here and they might even come up and strip like this. And if you get a fish here, my hands are separate and I lost control. I don't have control. I have to try to find a way to, to get that back up in here. And the, that first, man, that first two seconds, the reason why that first two seconds is why so many people lose fish, one, has to do with a poor hook set, but it's also the one time in the situation where you have the most slack. You have the most slack that first time because you have all the, the bend in your line, the bend in your leader, the stretch in your line, he's the farthest away. And if you're not tight to that fish and fighting that fish immediately hard the moment he takes, you're most likely gonna lose him. I got a big tree branch in the water. So that's first thing, numero uno, line under the fingers. Now, before I go over uh, the different retrieves, the different strip retrieves and the jerk strip, something that I wanna mention is your rod tip position. And I think a lot of people, especially when they're just getting into this, but they're gonna fish with a really high rod tip off the water. And what you have to understand is, as you can see it on the GoPro, but that's, that's slack right there. Like my rod tip, even if it's waist high, that's a f two feet of slack right there. And so it's just a loss of sensitivity and it, it takes you out of the position to get a solid hook set because that's line that you have to pick up either with your rod tip or on a strip set. Now the other thing that happens, especially when you're river fishing, and I'll try to cast this out into the current here, but a lot of people will let that fly swing and move downstream while their rod tip stays pointed straight. And what happens, and you, I'll just move my rod so you can see it, if this line starts moving downstream but my rod tip doesn't, Look at how much slack is forming between me and that fly. It's one of the reasons why when you swing, why when you're stripping a fly downstream, everything that you're gonna do, you're always gonna chase that fly and that fly line with your rod tip, just passively, so that you never have that lateral slack in your line. I always have a uh, low rod tip, no vertical slack, no lateral slack, able to keep the most direct connection to that fly that I can possibly keep. That way if you get a, uh, a neat, you can either strip set or you can set the hook with your rod tip and be in position. Now something I want to go over is, and it's something I've been doing this entire time, just passively, but it's the strip retrieve, but also the jerk strip retrieve. Now, first and foremost, I think the strip retrieve is the easiest to learn. I think it's the most foundational and the most applicable to the widest range of situations. That's going to be the technique I'm going to use when I'm still water fishing, your salt water fishing, your, your distance casting, maybe if I'm in a lake and I'm, I'm throwing 50, 60 feet, um, because it's the best position to be in to set the hook and have a positive hook set. And so when you're doing a straight strip retrieve, you can see my rod's out in front of me, my rod tip is low, I have a zero slack system. In a, a still water environment, you're gonna have a zero slack system, you're gonna be tight to that fly of fish eats. Not only am I in the best position to strip set and set the hook with the line hand, you get to eat, boom! You drive it home, right? Got, I went in past my nail knot there. Not only are you in the best position to strip set, but you also have the most leverage, if the fish is close to the boat, to set the hook with the rod tip. But the jerk strip retrieve, from the, the foundational kind of elements is uh, a jerk the fly and then you strip back tight. You jerk the fly and you strip back tight. Now one of the biggest issues that a beginner is going to have, it's, and it's just a coordination thing, you'll get, you'll get used to it and you'll get better. But what they tend to do is they'll jerk more line than they strip and jerk more line than they strip and jerk more line than they strip and jerk and jerk and jerk and they slowly but surely get farther and farther and farther out of position to properly set that hook and to be tight to that fly. And so what you have to do if you're going to employ the jerk strip, which is an amazing technique to use when you're fishing close range, when you're weight fishing a smaller river, when you're less than 20 feet away from that fly, because you can use that rod tip to really animate and swim. Get away from me, you horse fly. I'll kill you, man. Ugh. 
but you can input all of the nuance in life and breath that you can do with a rod tip that you can't necessarily do with a straight strip retrieve. But in order to make it as successful as it can be, you need to jerk and strip the same amount of line. You have to strip back the same amount of line that you're jerking. It's like if I'm, if I'm working this flash fast with a jerk strip, watch my rod tip. Even though it's going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, the relative position is never moving. I'm never getting farther and farther and farther and farther out of position. And that's absolutely critical. Now the cool thing about the jerk strip, especially when you're fishing close, is that you're in position. If he eats, boom, you sweep set, right? And that's why, in my opinion, it's a close range technique because you're gonna rely on the rod tip to set the hook. And that between the stretch and the fly line and the give and all of the energy in the fly rod and the fact that it's nine feet long and everything, it, it really pays to use that as a close range technique. If you're 50 feet away and a fish eats and you, and you try to sweep set, you're not gonna have the proper authority to drive that hook home. You'd be far better off strip setting, using the fly line to set the hook on that fish, set the hook on that fish, and in that situation, a straight strip retrieve is gonna be in the optimal position to do that. So those are the two retrieves. That's line management for the most part. So now you guys know, cast out, line under the fingers. You have to be in control, right? You guys have a proper understanding of rod tip position, either following your fly with the current so you don't have any lateral slack, low rod tip so you don't have any vertical slack. You understand a straight strip retrieve and, and the, the efficiency of it, especially for distance casting, still water casting, uh, salt water casting, uh, and being in the correct position to strip set all of the time. It's super critical, but also, you should now have the skill set to employ uh, a jerk strip retrieve, especially when you're close. And one of the things that I often do, even when I'm still water fishing, but I'll, if I make a 50 foot cast, well, the first 30 feet, the first 30 feet of that cast, <coughs> I got line going everywhere. The first 30 feet of that cast, I might just straight strip. And then when I get 20 feet out, well, then I might start twitching it and twitching it and twitching it and employ the jerk strip once I'm in range that I can effectively set the hook with a rod tip. And I'm not going to do that for maybe pike or muskie, but I will do that for smallmouth and trout and, and smaller, you know, if I have a smaller hooked fly and, and I'm going to have a little bit better penetration. That's the technique that I'm going to use um, when I get close to the boat like this. And you'll just see me do this and boom, set a hook on a smallmouth right there at boat side. So the last thing I want to go over is simple, uh, just simply leverage and how to properly fight a fish. Because a lot of times, uh, especially when you're dry fly fishing, nymph fishing, you're fishing smaller gear, you'll hook into a fish and you'll, you'll raise your arm and your arm's way up here. And the problem with that is I have, I've lost all of the leverage over this rod and the bend that I'm going to put in that rod is now going to be placed like halfway. It's like way up here instead of, whoa, that's leverage, right? And when you have to understand your fighting butt, is your fighting butt's there for a reason. <laughs> and it's there to be shoved into your guts, your hip bone, your groin, your belt, whatever you're doing, um, to actually put leverage, two-hand leverage against that rod so that you're bending that rod from the cork all the way to the tip and you're gonna actually tire that fish out using the rod instead of using your forearm muscles. Which when you get into streamer fishing, you start cranking out a bunch of pike and a bunch of smallmouth, man, your forearm's gonna be asking for a break. Um, and so it's super critical. That boom, that goes out. You strip into a fish, you turn that rod right against your belly, you actually use that rod butt against your side, and then you simply go opposite of whatever that fish is doing. If that fish is tugging up, you pull down. If that fish turns and goes down, you tug up, and you go opposite. I like to keep, especially when I'm fishing barbless, a really low rod tip to reduce jumping so that they don't throw the hook. It's one of the things that I find extremely helpful. So that's really proper way to, to fight a fish with a fighting button. What you'll see is when you use that actual fighting butt, your hands, it always stays down by your hips. It always stays in this nice little confined area. And you're never getting up here and up here and trying to fight a fish way up here. But boom, pin the sucker and keep it right here. It should never leave your side. And that's going to give you the maximum leverage to fight a fish for the entirety of the fight using the rod the way your rod is designed to be used and actually tying that fish out and getting him to the net as quickly as possible. Now uh, we're going to go fishing here and hopefully stick a small mouth. <laughs> uh. 
the barb's pinched, buddy. Don't worry about it. It'll come right out. That's BS right there. There's a fish in there. That's BS, man. Uh-uh. No way. Maybe he's just sitting on this rock right here. There he is. That's a better fish. Yeah, river smallmouth, baby. What's up, man? It's a nice fish. Ah, barbless. Gotta love barbless. count that hopefully you guys found that helpful there's some tips in there that you guys can use make you more consistent on the water and uh, thanks for watching as always if you're interested in this rod reel line setup that I have going on here you should check out this video I filmed about a week ago because this is one of my favorite streamer setups of all time and it's about $300 and it's absolutely epic so go check that out like, subscribe, share if you feel like it, and uh, tight lines. God bless.